Once we just had a brand new developer Q&A, we also have to go over some additional features that were added over the recent updates. Additionally, we have some news around the mobile launch, as well as a new update on the controller support, some free rewards and codes that can get you some unlock skins as well as free currency. We'll also go over some of the new Phase 5 stuff. We got a ton to talk about. What's up world, it's Utopia back in with another video. Today we're checking out all things once human. First up, we'll jump into the dev chat. We'll go over all the stuff with that there. So jumping right into it, this one is about the construction optimizations. As we know, a lot of the building mechanics and stuff there with that is really good, but overall is a little janky sometimes. So their opening statement here is they've been closely monitoring the feedback around the construction system. And they also agree that there's a significant room for improvement. They'll be addressing some issues there and all the concerns that were raised and also share the plans for enhancements there now i'll try to summarize these questions as best to my ability as i can because they are quite long okay so first up here they did talk about the roof and the stair alignment system so they did say here that a grid alignment system is actually being developed to resolve the issues with that this should improve construction ease and that will be released within a month and they did mention that this is a very high priority so we should see it again within the month like they said or in the beginning of september for question two, they talked about construction limits. They said the game will clarify component limits and increase the placement limit for certain types. While overall the limits remain due to technical constraints, building in Eternal Land offers a more freedom and more diverse option there. And there's going to be new features for creative players. They also do mention that the in-game tips may be a little bit misleading there, so they'll try to clarify those. And they do plan to eventually add new gameplay features specifically for those that want to design and love building. Question 3, they talk about the water and electrical issues. They said that improvements are coming and they're including a simplified interface for managing wires and pipes, the flow direction indicators, and general pipes for transporting various liquids. As we know of right now, some things are a little bit complex there, especially with the pipes. You need to raise certain objects above others in order for it to flow the direction that you want and as we know currently the indicators aren't always the most easy to understand hopefully they do simplify that in the future or at least hopefully they adapt a system that will kind of indicate where the flow direction will go before attaching pipes or even kind of indicators there again i think they really do need to have a little bit more of a simplified system or at least some tool tips to help players understand which way things are going for question four they did want to address fish tanks they did mention here the capacity of fish tanks will be significantly increased and a bug preventing others from seeing fish will be fixed. So obviously if you do catch fish, you can include those in your fish tanks. So they can give you a nice little uniqueness there. However, currently sometimes players cannot see your fish. So again, it looks like they're making a fix for that overall. And they also said that new types of fish tanks are also going to be introduced. So you won't exactly see the same ones, hopefully different shapes and sizes. That could add some really cool dynamics there, especially if you can incorporate into those builds better instead of being just a furnished item, but actually incorporate it into the building mechanisms itself. For question five, they talk about the agriculture system. They said that they have optimizations that are ongoing and they plan to introduce a range of indicators and cost information for grow lights and irrigation systems. Mostly because those building items, the grow lights and irrigation systems, they don't really denote things very well. Especially their range indication, how far things kind of apply. People have had to do that through testing and figure that out itself, or the player base has kind of had to figure that out. So hopefully, again, they do add some quality of life stuff there that is much needed. For the last question here, question six, they do talk about the control issue. They want to make adjustments to prevent accidental activation of irrigation systems during planting. I've had this happen a ton and my planting system is kind of convoluted. I went off another YouTuber's designs who has this sort of irrigation system that's underneath the actual planting beds. So if I hit mine, I have to move all of my stuff out of the way in order to get to the irrigation system to change it. But it does allow that to have the farthest range possible. So I do hope they change that as I've accidentally hit it a few times. They also said here that the potential enhancements through deviation skills are being explored. So hopefully we do see some more deviation quality of life there. They have a closing statement here talking about what the next dev chat is going to be. Where they say here they're sharing their progress on optimizations and other aspects of the game. Again, hopefully this is going to be about Prime War and the regular war stuff as there's been a lot of issues there, server side stuff. In fact, my first war was really bad right off the bat. The connection issues were insane. People couldn't do damage to each other. So I really hope they do fix that in the future. As it's one of the main reasons to play the game is to progress your character for wars as well as Prime Wars if you're on PvE servers. Again, so I hope that optimization stuff is around that there. 
Otherwise, we have another New World problem on our hands. Although I'd even argue that in some cases, this is actually worse than New World Wars in some instances. Especially because you can at least do damage to other players in that game, or you even could at the start. Where this one does have significant player issues and server issues there. And the wars are nowhere near the size of New Worlds. So yeah, I really do hope that's addressed sometime soon, as that is a significant thing that needs to change. Jumping over, we did have some free rewards within the game, as well as some free codes. I'll display those codes here to you on the screen as well as include them in the description so this first one of the top one here is for a free camouflage skin for the motorcycle we also have some other freebies here for 300 energy links and two activators or at least each code will give you that and some codes will also include an adrenaline shot as well as two sanity gummies these are some brand new ones i think maybe one is the same as previous but just some free goodies there we also have some brand new free rewards in the game itself to claim. This is through the Midsummer's Gateway and through the Greatest Gift is Time. If you haven't already, you can click on Participate through the Midsummer's Gateway and then head to the Greatest Gift is Time where there is currently two unlocks. Those do contain some Stardust Source as well as an Emissary Crate. And for that Gift 1, you can currently claim the Spider Crimson Gloves. The next two do have the exact same thing except the Crimson Gloves, which in place of it are cosmetic tokens. We also do have some brand new shop items. This is the Nutcracker Combo Gift Box, as well as the Showdown Combo Gift Box. Now both of these are a bit RNG there, and I'll try to explain the system as best as possible. So essentially you can purchase one or the other gift box, and this will give you a random weapon skin. You do have a chance to permanently unlock the weapon skin. These boxes only cost 20 Christogen each. However, in order to permanently unlock the weapon skin, you will have to get an accumulated 45 days of use. So for example here, if you do get a box and you only get one day of use of the skin, again, you can use that skin for one day. However, if you want to permanently unlock that skin, you will have to get a combined 45 days. You can also receive a 3-day, a 7-day, and again, that permanent unlock. So this is a bit of RNG there with that overall, but the odds to get the permanent unlock are only 2%. Again, for each box, it will cost you 20 Christogen. So it is really cheap, but the RNG there is quite insane. Now, the purchase of this will be closed after all weapon skins in the gift box have been permanently unlocked, and duplicate boxes will be converted into cosmetic tokens. It looks like you can only buy 10 boxes at a time, I do believe more than likely after 10 boxes, you will probably receive the permanent weapon skin, at least one. It's probably why they do limit there overall. So not the easiest to unlock these, and a bit of RNG on top of RNG. And what seems like to me kind of like a pity system. But these seem like they'll be pretty rare, as it will take a while to unlock that permanent weapon skin. And again, you only get one of those randomly, and that's after you've accumulated 45 days for one of those skins. But some decent skins overall, and some brand new ones to the shop. We also had a brand new feature. This was talked about in the previous patch notes but if you didn't know how to access it it is the weapon inspect feature and you can access that by holding tab and then hitting space and there should be an inspect key on the bottom right it's a nice little quality of life feature there several games have this just something cool to kind of add to the gun mechanics we also do have some last minute mentionables here so first up here we do have the potential expected release date for the mobile version of once human which could come out on the 26th of september Again, this isn't officially confirmed as of yet, but it is showcased over on the App Store or Apple's version of the App Store where it does have this release date showcased. So you might be able to play this on your mobile device if it is supported. We also did have that Phase 5 drop for a lot of servers. There isn't a ton of new things with the Phase 5, but we do get a lot of new Starcrom to claim. We do have this question here over on the subreddit asking about the phase 5 season goals so someone asked here if the mutated crops can be done through a gross room but as someone pointed out here it's not what you plant it's how to gather those or at least that's the season goal is to gather them so you will have to remove your gross room to collect those as those won't count toward your season goal as if the gross room picks it up then it will not actually count so you cannot use your gross room there and you'll have to remove it for this challenge specifically or if that's the one of the challenges you want to do we also have one more update about the controller support here again i get comments literally every single video asking about this but uh, they do mention here again that once human will support controller within august i do assume this is going to come with the august 17th update as well as potentially dx12 we've had a lot of stuff pointed around that date so that's when i assume that this will come out last up here as always i do feature a build in a lot of my videos now this person here is one of my subscribers and they submitted this build to me as well as into the top architect definitely a different build here using 
a lot of plants and a lot of plant life. I really do like this one as it's almost like a home that you could see IRL. I do love the use of glass and I almost wish I would purchase it at this point, but I really do like how they incorporated the kind of plant life as well as with the foresty background. It looks really nice overall, so definitely a decent build there. And this was done by Azazel24 over on the Discord. That should cover for today's video. If you like, like, and subscribe, and until the next one, deuces.